All right, before we dive into this video, I just have a couple things to say. One, good morning. I hope your week was great. And then two, I cannot thank you all enough for the love, the appreciation, the comments, the support, the collaboration that y'all have shown me on this last video. Full transparency, we gained over 200 subscribers since posting the last video, and I am absolutely mind blown, super stoked to build this product with you all and have y'all come along with this journey, and I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So just wanted to say thank you, I appreciate you, y'all are freaking awesome, but let's get on with the rest of the video. All right, so we went ahead and uh, you know bit the bullet and tidied up the index page. That's your main dashboard. So just broke it down in components, super easy, copy paste what we had in there. We lost some of our padding and styling just because of the V stack gap, but that's okay. We'll add that back here at another time. But I think now we've got ourselves in a clean state. We're gonna do a commit <laughs> so we don't lose all of this code. I like where this is at right now. You know, like I said, minus some of the styling that needs to come back, but we are making great progress to now head into the setup of some of the models and interfaces like the projects TS down here you see um, to start getting into designing ultimately what the scheme is gonna look like to uh, incorporate Realm. So let's talk about one of the biggest, if not the biggest developer trap that I think we all fall into. And unfortunately, I myself just fell into this. So full transparency, since the last video, I haven't really gotten shit done on this project. And if you look at my notebook here, you know, pause the screen, look at it. It is basically the exact same designs that we had in the thumbnail of the last video. I think one of the biggest traps that is so damn easy to fall into is that perfectionism analysis paralysis type trap. And what I mean is I am working on this workshop screen. And full reminders, or if you're new here, the workshop in this application I'm building is your projects, your inventory, and your events. The events seemed pretty straightforward. I, you know, I thought of a calendar type widget. Eventually I landed on a Kanban board for the projects, but it was the inventory that I'm like, how the you know, how the hell should I display this? And I kind of defeated myself there. I spent probably a good week, week and a half just trying to ideate different things, go on dribble.com and look up different designs just to nail down the perfect design. And I think the reality is I caught myself in that trap where I didn't make any progress. You know, I, I stuck myself in the sand so hard on this one thing that I didn't progress or work on other screens or write any code, literally not a single line of code. And I'm taking accountability. I'm heeding my own advice. I am just going to stick to one thing and move on and come back to it later if I need to. So for now, the inventory section is going to be a table is that I'll have some buttons to filter and add things or whatever. But for now, we're gonna pick something and get moving again because I kind of just you know fell off the wagon a little bit. So this is me just being totally transparent with you all that it is okay to catch yourself in this analysis paralysis situation, but it's even more okay to acknowledge it for what it is, pick something, whatever it is, the easiest thing, pick something and move on. So that's what we're doing. We're going to make this inventory portion of the screen just a simple table. If I need to come back to it later because I hate it, uh, then, then we can. You know, the data behind the table is not going to change, just the visual representation of the data. So I think that's totally fine. It allows us to move forward with the next objective, which is setting up this local database. So let's dive into some Realm, some MongoDB, setting up the tasks, the local synchronization between the two, and uh, let's start getting some collections and, and documents going. I need to start writing some data to start pulling those things into the app. So it should be a lot of fun. I am, I don't know if disappointed is the right word, but I'm bummed that I let myself get into this deep dark hole of analysis paralysis, but that's cool, that is life. That is the real part of this journey, it happens. You cannot learn from books. Replace these pages with life lessons and then 
you will have a book that is worth its weight in gold. Hope y'all can resonate with that. I think that might be helpful for some of you all. I know y'all are getting kind of stuck in your projects. My advice, pick something, move on, come back to it later when you have a better idea. So that is it. Let's get back to the code montage and working through this realm MongoDB setup. Okay, so I wanted to just come on here and show you some of the progress I actually made with this. Uh, and this is a new view where I'm showing you code and uh, the simulator without recording it. So it's a screen recording. Hopefully this is a little better. So we have a couple things here. One, I updated the app layout to include an authenticated flow. Obviously we'll eventually get there, but I think it's just good to kind of nestle it in there now. For now, just includes the tabs. This is probably all it will need to include for, for quite a while. But uh, outside of that, we have three main screens. You have your index, your privacy, and your register. They don't do anything. They don't look like anything, but it at least has the workflow going. So your privacy just pops open as this little modal, pretty sweet looking, like the look and feel of this. You can drag it back down. Your register is just your normal stack navigation. You know, you can go back to your login screen and then your login, hashtag cheat codes. There is no real auth quite yet, but your login is what leads you over to your dashboard. So you can see here, we resolved the tab layout. We now have our center click button. And currently I have the ability to switch around between the tabs, my finance tab and my dashboard is actually just copy and paste to the same thing. You can at least see the header changes. Oh, and I do have this little uh, log out button for right now. That's just something to navigate back to that screen since there's no other way. Eventually this will be where your profile icon is and that's where your log out will be hidden. But that is future us problems. I will say one of the cool things that we did today uh, I didn't know how to do it before, went and learned, shout out Simon Grimm, you were incredibly helpful, is the use of the center click button here. So what I want to happen is I click this plus icon and we'll swap it out for a nicer looking icon. It's a little chunky right now. But if I click this plus icon, what I really want is that I get a bottom sheet for about half of the distance of the screen. And that's what gives you like quick like actions to create events, add material or inventory, add projects, things like that. I want to have a little half sheet that allows all of those quick add clickable options. So for now, it is just an alert. So it's, uh, you know, this create tab, but you can see that unlike maybe some of the other tabs like workshop, for example, I can click this button and it does not route me to somewhere new. So it's pretty easy to set up. Like I said, shout out Simon Grimm. You are a huge help for this. This is just one of the tab screens. So the important part here is that this icon is a tab you can see create.tsx and that's what we're matching to here and then i have a listener that just prevents the default action which would route you to that page and instead i tell it to pass an alert so this is exactly where i can go ahead and plug in my bottom sheet and i'm going to use the library for that i'm not going to try to make one myself so nothing crazy i like it it's good we'll probably pause on the bottom sheet for now but at least the plumbing and the setup is there next steps leading towards the damn realm in mongodb is figuring out all of these little components as you can see in the shop overview section i just kind of slapped some of these things together copy paste copy paste whereas now the project section here i'm starting to actually pass in the props to load these things so ideally i will have it soon where i can click on one of these cards and it routes me to this particular projects uh you know information details type screen so just wanted to come on here, give you all this quick progress and back to the video. So we made a bunch of progress on the app, just tidied some things up. I still haven't integrated Realm or MongoDB. So at this rate, I'm just gonna stop saying I'm going to do it because I keep getting distracted with these onesie twosies as I'm learning. So shout out to Simon Grimm. I actually signed up for his Galaxy's Dev Premium membership, whatever the hell he's calling it. And he's got a ton of really amazing tutorials, one on YouTube for free, but when you do pay the, I think it's 25 bucks a month or something, holy shit, the amount of good tutorials he has there is really incredible. So I'm not affiliated, there's no link, anything like that. Simon Grimm, I will link it down below because I'm finding it overly helpful and, and maybe you all will too. But we made a lot of really good progress. The wife and daughter are coming home here in about a little over one hour. So I need to start editing this YouTube video, get some dinner on the table. And for that, I will see you all next week. Peace.